the Harp Can-Am Tour comes to a close here at the Calder Park Speedway in Australia for the U.S. versus Canada race here today. This is not an exhibition. This is a points battle where 21 drivers have an opportunity to be your overall Park Series champion. Car number 07, Joshua Sikuli got the pole and is going to keep the lead. Coming out of turn number 2, cutting off Nathan Hood in car number 54. Sikuli, part of the Canadian Tour for the 2016 season. Not running for this championship, but is just out there trying to log some laps, see if he can impress in the final race of the year. Drivers like Matt McIntyre following close behind. There's Emmanuel Harton in the 26, seeing if he can gain some ground. McIntyre trying to get those points. We talked about that championship hunt, and one of the favorites is Prudence Littlejohn, car number 31. Won two races in the Canadian Tour and the Canadian Tour Championship overall. Had a great season for Prudence Littlejohn, as uh, 2015 was not the most spectacle affair. And we have a wreck right behind them on the back straightaway. They're going to race back to the line. Caution is out. But Prudence Littlejohn in the top 10. Let's see what happened. Brazilian Gabriel Wanderly gets turned by John King. And collects Annie Thomas, the most for the uh, Montreal winner, my mistake. And I believe that's Zachary Fitzwater in the 59 that got around as well. Gabriel Wanderley uh, gets back on track. Let's take a look at another angle. Alex Tanker's in the middle of this in the Regina Builders, number 91. Comes right up on track in front of Alex Wheeler. Wheeler's second in the Canadian points. The closest driver to be able to overtake Prudence Littlejohn. And Zachary Fitzwater Sr. in the 59 involved as well. Uh, state, uh, countrymen for this race and oh, that is a shame for Alex Wheeler in the 69 machine. That car is crunched up and much like uh, Target in Canada, he is going to fail to make it to the finish this time. And oh, another issue on track. That's Prudence Littlejohn, car number 31, pitting from ninth. She's got a problem. We got to report that it is a cylinder down on the number 31 machine. That is tragic. And Prince Littlejohn looked to be uh, one of the favorites to win this race. But now she's going to have to pull down pit road. Hopefully they can get that car out there so she can uh, at least get some points. But I think that's going to be uh, a bit of a stretch for her now. She'll have to bank on the points she came in with uh, from the end of the season. Joshua Sikuli, car number 07, is going to lead them back to the restart. Matt McIntyre in second. He's currently the second highest in points for the Park USA Tour going into this event, so this could be a great opportunity for him to be able to steal the race lead away from Joshua Sikuli and go to the championship hunt. Sikuli holding them off. Gaggle of cars behind him. Let's take a look at Robert Piet, the Flying Dutchman, who managed to win the Hark USA Championship, not by winning a lot of races like Prudence Littlejohn, but by being very consistent week in, week out. He actually won no races this year and was kind of under the radar in most events. Kind of snuck in there and took the championship away. Now Robert Piet has the opportunity to do the same thing. He's 15th overall, running right behind Luca Obrovac in the number three machine. Robert Piet's also helped by the fact that Tyler Faber, his nearest competitor in the Hark USA Championship, is not here this weekend. He decided to drop out of the event and allow a driver to race their way in via a consolation event, which is Luca Obrovac, who's right ahead of him. We mentioned that Fitzwater was in the race. A couple of countrymen here today for Australia. Rim hard against the highest placing of them right now in 29th, which is not the most impressive showing. Henrietta Fitzwater's in that 61 machine, a couple spots behind in 33rd. Zachary Fitzwater is 37th with some crash damage. And uh, another Australian of Danielson failed to qualify for the event via the Sandown Consolation event. But Rim Hardigan is actually a championship competitor, currently third highest placing of the U.S. Tour. If he can work his way up through the field like he's done so many times throughout the year, he may be able to challenge for that victory. Ruby Bragg, car number seven in the wash snow machine, has been a factor throughout many Hark U.S. races, just has not been able to get that finish that she's been looking forward to. She's going to go and challenge car number 07 down to the inside, and Ruby Bragg is going to steal the race lead away. And uh, she joked over the radio that uh, the UK is taking their colony back. I'm not sure if she's going to be the fan favorite in Pitt Road, but this could be a, a bit of a driving force for Rim Hardigan to try and chase her down. I don't think the Australian uh, populace is going to uh, appreciate that comment on the radio. Gerald Rennington is going to steal second place away in the number 99 Canex machine. Just as quickly as Ruby Bragg takes the lead, she's going to get surpassed by car number 21, Alex Bragal. 
Alex Morgao has been a U.S. Tour competitor throughout most of the season and uh, has not been really covered in the broadcast. He's uh, mostly been under the radar, but he finished in the top 10 in points despite of it. Getting consistent finishes and just staying out of trouble throughout most of the year. Could this be the dark horse story of the race? Alex Morgao, who got very little coverage throughout the season, stealing it away today, getting the overall title? He's going to have some challengers, uh, though, right behind him. Greg Moore and Chris Dodd are both competing for it. We move back further in the field to 20th place. Luca Obrovac in car number three. We mentioned worked his way in through the consolation race at Sandown. This is a bit of a, a redemption race for the number three machine. He is a former winner at this track back in 2014, and he did so in a controversial fashion. It uh, caused a bit of an incident on track. That resulted in him both winning the race and the championship that year. However, things have not gone his way in season since. Has really not been much of a factor in 2015 or 2016. Didn't make the uh, finale via his points. But luckily, Tyler Faber gave up his spot and allowed a driver to race their way in. To Luko Brovac, trying to make the most of his spot in the field. Right now, running outside the top 20. Not sure if that's going to be the best today, but hopefully he can work his way up through the field later on. Chris Dodd, car number 88, is going to try and give the 21 a challenge. Chris Dodd is currently ahead of him in the point standings and is uh, trying to battle for that title. He won at the dirt track in Oswego earlier this year. Had a very successful run at that track and kept consistent throughout most of the other events. Uh, his teammate Tommy Turbo did not make the event this year and uh, had a bit of an issue with getting in some major wrecks throughout the year. But Chris Dodd hoping to uh, bring the win and the Park Championship to Puerto Rico, his uh, native land. Greg Moore in car number 10 trying to make a pass to the inside line. Greg Moore out of the uh, Canadian Tour, uh, one of the higher ups in the championship hunt, and oh, makes that uh, diving pass underneath. Won the race at, I believe, uh, Delaware. That, I believe that was race 7 of the Heart Canada Tour. So Greg Moore is on a bit of a hot streak going into this event. Car number 7, Ryder Smith, is going to crack the top 5. Driver out of the United Kingdom. Some of the UK drivers have been doing well today, like him in uh, Indumian. And car number 1, who's up there near the front. Ryder Smith uh, trying to make something happen today. He is another driver that has a shot at the title, though his chance is a little bit more, uh, more out there. He's going to have to bank on bonus points to to get him into that championship position. Plus, maybe some other drivers not doing too well. Matt McIntyre being up near the front is not helping a lot of these drivers beat Robert Piette on track. Slow car of the number 43. He got involved in that earlier incident, and he's going to just drop back around on the outside. Alex Rogow still out front. There's car number 93, Shrimp Angritz. He's going to dive it low. We've got four wide racing. There's Viznowski, Reddington, and Hartnett. And now that lap car is going to get involved in the mix. These guys are really going for it today. And they battle their way to the front. No one's really giving an inch, but Viznowski is going to uh, hold on to that position. <laughs> As, uh, he's going to be the winner that time around. Battle for the race lead as Chris Dodd is at the inside line. He's got help from the number 98 of Nick Guerra. There's Alex Mago, though, with a little bit of momentum to the outside line. Cole Baker's in the mix as well. Nick Guerra is trying to get down low, trying to pass car number 88 to steal the lead for himself. But we got a three-car draft line to the outside lane that could uh, be detrimental to the 98. The inside line's a little quicker, but more cars to the outside lane, I would imagine, would be faster at this high-speed racetrack. Car number 88, Chris Dodd's going to get back out of line, pull in front of Guerra, and it looks like Chris Dodd's going to dive low and try and take this race lead away from Alex Vergao, who had it pretty steadfast for the past couple of laps. Can the Sky Optics machine clear him? He does. Now he just has to hold off Nick Guerra in car number 98. Can he get it done? He's going to hold them off on the inside line. And Chris Dodd's going to lead and get a potential bonus point here today if he can lead those most laps of the event. Except for Chris Dodd. But car number 98 of Nicholas Guerra is going to dive low and try and steal the race lead away. That car may look a little bit different to you. Normally he drives the Sleep Country machine. That looks more like Chris Luvia's car. But 
Uh, Nick Guerra actually wrecked his car in practice. They didn't have a backup available because they only brought one to Australia just as a cost of sending him there. Chris Louvier, who uh, attempted the sand down event, offered his car to him since it has a similar number. And this car is a winning machine. It had one at Lee USA Speedway earlier in the Park US Tour. Wasn't enough to get Louvier into this event, however. But uh, a little bit of a team effort there, bridging uh, international borders as uh, Louvier is going to help a Canadian series driver get into the main event. He's going to lead with that number 98 machine car out front. Zachary Fitzwater was having a pretty bad day in front of his home crowd, and it's going to get even worse as car number 59 is going to grenade on turn four, and he's not going to go to pit road. Not sure what he was attempting to do. That car is already slowing down. Here come the leaders. Watch out, everybody. Uh... Luckily, the 59 is going to pull it into the grass, but I don't know why he didn't dive down pit road sooner. That's going to do it for card number 59 as uh, we had our green, our caution pit stops for the race. Everyone's going to work their way down pit road. I don't think anyone's going to stay out. This is the opportunity to make it to the end of the race on fuel. Everyone makes their pit stops. Uh, Cole Baker was going to lead a lap under caution. But issues for Benoit Lothair Irvine and the 15 Osco machine. Apparently they have a loose wheel on that 15. They didn't put enough lug nuts on and they can't be racing with a car with a wheel with a huge vibration on. So a bit of a miscalculation is going to result in them having to come back down pit lane. Nicholas Guerra cycled off pit road first. Cole Baker was able to lead a lap under caution, but uh, Guerra was able to beat him off pit road. Keeping that inside line, Guerra's going to keep the race lead as Chris Dodd in the uh, 8 machine is going to try and hold on. Car number 99, Gerald Runnington, running 3, now 4 wide with Josh Shakuli. Matt McIntyre wisely backs out, but these three are still going at it. 3 wide, who's going to be the winner in this battle? As it uh, looks like Luko Brovac is going to get a little bit of a jump to the outside lane, but can Shakuli get it done on the inside? Battling down low, it looks like Sekuli and Obrovac are going to be the two uh, winners on that front. Car number 20, Cole Baker, challenging Nicholas Guerra for the race lead. Ruby Bragg's up there, so is Greg Moore. Who can take this race lead away? Lap traffic, there's the 43 car, who's been slow on track all day. Car number 20, down low, Cole Baker is going to use him as a pick, and Cole Baker is going to steal the race lead away. Now, Cole Baker is a great short track racer had a lot of solid efforts this year but just couldn't connect really wily driver that is a bit of a closer in these events we are past the halfway point so this could be the opportunity that cole baker needs on track and that motec number 20 starting to pull away from the rest of the pack but a little bit of uh drafting help speaking of the motec car the other one of harry saliba is not going to have the best luck that car is going to grenade on the back straight away he was another driver that was battling for the title that is now out of competition so a shame for Harry Salba, who had a pretty hard-fought season, had a lot of uh, issues throughout the year, but still managed to work his way into championship competition. Alex Tanker almost made contact with him going into pit road. Battle for the lead as Greg Moore in the Napa Auto Parts number 10 is going to dive low on Cole Baker. This is the classic battle of the Canadian Tour versus the U.S. Tour. Who can get it done? Driving it into turn number three, there's Carl and Dumian, car number one. Where did he come from? He really worked his way up through the pack as uh, I don't believe he started particularly well in this race. Car number 10, Greg Moore, holding on to the lead for now, but Endumian is down low, trying to make the path. There's Troy McClure, car number 43, actor of film and television, now behind the race car. Uh, not the best season for Troy McClure, but he managed to make the race anyway, so this could be a shot of redemption for him as he's battling up near the front. Here comes Endumian down low. A little bit of help from TV's Troy McClure. And Endumian's going to pass to the inside line. Now we have to make a little bit of a note. Robert Piet is outside of the top 20. This is a great opportunity for Greg Moore to try and win this championship. Not a lot of championship competitors up near the front. There's Chris Dodd, I can see. But, uh... I'm not too sure about some of the other drivers out there on track. This could be a great opportunity if he can hold on to it. But he's starting to drop like a rock. There's Luca Obrovac. Where did he come from? Cole Baker loses the lead to Carl Indumian, but Cole Baker is going to get it back as Brian Fox is going to act as a bit of a pick. 
Fox involved in, I believe, the uh, lap one debacle. Had some uh, pretty heavily damage early in this event. He's been slow. There's that 43 machine who's uh, barely keeping race pace. Cole Baker in front, but here comes Endumian. He's battling hard to the inside line. This run is unprecedented. Chris Dodd in third place. He could be a, a driver that takes this championship away. He's going to help Endumian get to the front. Cole Baker really has no stake in this. He's just trying to get as good of a finish as he can. Uh, we want to mention that Brian Fox in that 74 car no longer championship eligible due to cars pulling out of the race and him being so far behind. But Cole Baker still holding him off. But Endumian is going to find that pick to the inside line. Nicholas Guerra on the 98 is going to get it done. He's going to push car number one to the race lead. He's going to get it done. As Endumian out front. But here comes Guerra. He's going to dive low in that Chris Louvier machine. Wouldn't that be something if he wins this race in a backup car? Chris Dodd is going to try and make a three wide for the race lead. It's going to get a little loose though. Not going to be able to get it done. Luko Brovac. Car number three, raced his way in from the consolation event to the top five. He's now fourth overall, as Nicholas Guerra is going to steal the race lead away from Carl and Dumian. And Guerra is going to take it. He leads this time round. Lap traffic ahead of them. They're going to have to watch out for that. I believe that's Alex Tanker. Car number three, Luca Obrovac, diving low. Can Obrovac win this race after winning it in 2014 and causing a huge Ish incident that resulted in him winning the race and the championship. Can he win it cleanly this time? Diving low. Oh, Brovac's going to take the race lead away. We are running out of laps. Only about five laps to go as we cross the line. Drag race to the line. Oh, Brovac gets it that time around. Can Oh, Brovac hold on to it? But there's Brandon Krasta, car number 09. Where did he come from? He's diving low and trying to make some passes underneath these leaders. Obrovac's going to try and hold off the leaders as there is car number 98 trying to seal to the outside line. Chris Dodd and Brandon Krasta are battling up near the front. Now Brandon Krasta came out of seemingly nowhere. He was he didn't start very well in this event, but he's a driver that has a shot at this title. He's uh, fifth in Canadian Series points, and the top four in Canadian Series points have had problems. He's got a good opportunity to steal this race lead away. He's got to hope that Robert Piette drops a couple positions. We got to report that it's literally within points of Robert Piet. Robert Piet struggles to hang on to a top 20 position. I'm not sure what's been the issue with him. Bell near the front on lap 89. Car number one of Carl and Dumian going to pass down low. He's going to steal the race lead away from Luko Brovac. Here comes Brandon Krasta. If he can win this race, he can potentially win this championship. Krasta's going for it. Car number 09 trying to dive low. As car number one, Carl and Dumian, hangs on to that race lead. What can he do? Carl and Dumian out front. Can he get it done? Brandon Krasta trying. He's looking to the inside line. Chris Dodds there. He wants to try and get the pass as well. Krasta is catching up to car number one. And Dumian's going to have to try and throw the block on him in the corner. A little bit about Carl and Dumian. He's had a lot of bad luck at this track in the past. Uh, he's gotten wrecked out by his sister and teammate before. He just barely made the top 21 to make this event. One point over Sona Kors, which is Robert Piet's uh, teammate. Can Carl and Dumian get the win today? Or can Brandon Krasta steal it away on the final lap? Final couple of corners. Brandon Krasta down low. Can he get enough momentum to get by car number one? And Dumian slides up the racetrack, but the 09 isn't closing enough. Coming to the line, Carl and Dumian is going to win here at the Calder Park Oval. The driver from the United Kingdom had no luck at this track, just barely made this event. One point separated him, him from making this race and winning and just being delegated to the consolation race. So congratulations to Carl and Dumian and that rather basically painted number one machine. As we uh, take our, the cars down, we're going to uh, review the top 10, and we'll see if Brandon Krasta was able to win this title, or if Robert Piet was able to gain enough points to keep that race lead. Carl and Dumian with your race winner today, with Brandon Krasta finishing impressive second place. Chris Dodd, third place overall, good run for him, and Ruby Bragg. Uh, it's going to be a good day for United Kingdom drivers, as two of them finished in the top five.
Luka Obrovac went from the consolation race to the main event and finished fifth. Then it was car number 43, Troy McClure. Alex Rogal in the 21, keeping consistent. Joshua Michaels, we didn't talk about him today, but he made it up there. Nick Guerra in a backup car, ninth. And Greg Moore drops to his car, number 10th overall. By just two points, Robert Piet, the Flying Dutchman, will beat Prudence Little John on track and take home the overall 2016 Park Championship. Great job by Robert Piet. Just barely finished well enough to keep those positions over Prudence Little John. Brandon Crasto was only five points away. If he had won that race, he would have gotten some bonus points to be able to get it done. And if Robert Piet had gotten passed by some of those drivers he was working with, that could have spelled a different tale for this event. But Great job for Robert Piet being able to win two championships this year in the Hark series. We want to thank everybody who tuned in for the Hark Can-Am series in our 2016 season. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of great racing all year long. And we hope that you'll join us for any future events in the Hark series. Until then, I'm John Cittadino. Thank you for watching the Hark Can-Am Tour.